Good morning. Sunday has come, thank God. And this Sunday we are observing as the second Sunday in Lent, the follow the order of worship that you find in our printed service folder for this morning. And our service begins with our opening hymn. Hymn 257, we sing verses one through four. Please rise. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins to God our Father beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions to the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my O oh, almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess to you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor sinful being. 
And now I ask each of you in the presence of God who searches the heart, do you confess that you have sinned and do you repent of your sins? I do. Do you believe that Jesus Christ has redeemed you from all your sins and do you desire forgiveness in his name? Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office, as a called and ordained servant of God's word, announce the grace of God to all of you. And in the stead and by the command of our Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. May he comfort your heart by his holy absolution and strengthen you by his sacraments that your joy may be full. Peace be with you. Amen. Remember your mercy, O Lord, and your steadfast love, for they have been from of old. Let not my enemies exult over me. Redeem Israel, O God, out of all his troubles. To you, O Lord, I lift up my soul. O my God, I trust. Let me not be put to shame. Remember not the sins of my youth or my transgressions. According to your steadfast love, remember me for the sake of your goodness, O Lord. Good and upright is the Lord. Therefore, he instructs sinners. The Lord be with you. Mm -hmm. Let us all pray. O Lord God, who seest that of ourselves we have no strength, keep us both outwardly and inwardly, that we may be defended from all adversities which may happen to the body and from all evil thoughts which may assault and hurt the soul, 
through Jesus Christ, thy Son, our Lord, who liveth and reigneth with thee and the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. Please be seated. The Old Testament lesson appointed for the second Sunday in Lent is written in Isaiah chapter 45, and we read there verses 20 through 25. It's written, assemble yourselves and come, draw near together, you survivors of the nations. They have no knowledge who carry their wooden idols and keep on praying to a God that cannot save. Declare and present your case. Let them take counsel together. Who told this long ago? Who declared it of old? Was it not I, the Lord? And there is no other God besides me, a righteous God and a Savior. There is none besides me. Turn to me and be saved all the ends of the earth, for I am God and there is no other. By myself I have sworn From my mouth has gone out in righteousness a word that shall not return. To me every knee shall bow, every tongue shall swear allegiance. Only in the Lord it shall be said of me, a righteousness and strength. To him shall come and be ashamed all who were incensed against him. In the Lord all the offspring of Israel shall be justified and shall glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The psalmody for today, Psalm 121. I lift up my eyes to the hills, from whence comes my help. My help comes from the Lord, who made heaven and earth. The Lord is your keeper. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun shall not strike you by day, nor the moon by night. The Lord shall preserve you from all evil. He shall preserve your soul. The Lord shall preserve your going out and your coming in from this time forth and even forevermore. The epistle lesson, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, beginning with the first verse. It's written... Finally then, brothers, we ask and urge you in the Lord Jesus that as you received from us how you ought to walk and to please God just as you are doing, that you do so more and more. For you know what instructions we gave you through the Lord Jesus. For this is the will of God, your sanctification, that you abstain from sexual immorality that each one of you know how to control his own body in holiness and honor, not in the passion of lust like the Gentiles who do not know God, and that no one transgress and wrong his brother in this matter, because the Lord is an avenger in all these things, as we told you beforehand and solemnly warned you. For God has not called us for impurity, but in holiness." This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Who can utter the mighty deeds of the Lord or declare all his praise? Blessed are they who observe justice, who do righteousness at all times. Remember me, O Lord, when you show favor to your people Help me when you save them. Please rise. The Holy Gospel for the second Sunday in Lent is written in the 15th chapter of the Gospel according to St. Matthew, beginning with the 21st verse. Glory be to you. It's written. Jesus went away from there and withdrew to the district of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a Canaanite woman from that region came out and was crying 
Have mercy on me, O Lord, son of David. My daughter is severely oppressed by a demon. But he did not answer her a word. And his disciples came and begged him, saying, Send her away, for she is crying out after us. Jesus answered, I was sent only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. But she came and knelt before him, saying, Lord, help me. And he answered, It is not right to take the children's bread and throw it to the dogs. She said, Yes, Lord, yet even the dogs eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered her, O woman, great is your faith. Be it done for you as you desire. And her daughter was healed instantly. Here ends the Holy Gospel. Praise be to I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of his Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Ghost of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried. And the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshiped and glorified, who spake by the prophets. And I believe one holy Christian and apostolic church. I acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins. And I look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Please be seated. Hymn 258, verses 1, 2, and 3.
Let us pray. O oh, Almighty God, most merciful Father, we give you thanks that you gather us to yourself around your word and your gifts. By your good Holy Spirit, speak to our hearts. Teach us repentance, confident, joyful trust in your promises. Move the hearts of all of us to be filled with confident joy that, that corresponds to your gospel of forgiving peace and life. To that end, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O God, our rock and our redeemer, amen. In the name of Jesus, whose comforts are all the sweeter through suffering, grace to you and peace from God the Father and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ, amen. Our text begins with the Lord Jesus, the gospel lesson for today, the Lord Jesus leaving, withdrawing to the region of Tyre and Sidon. He crossed the border. And if you're following along with the Lord Jesus and following his movements, if you're walking in the group with him, you wonder, what are we doing up here? Leaving from the Mount of Transfiguration, going down toward Jerusalem and down toward trouble, Jesus sometimes takes us to places we don't want to go, and oftentimes away from comforts or off the couch. Well, here, a small family is going to have joy and peace and rest because of it. And that little household is like this house. And that home is like our homes because the Lord Jesus comes. Even though at first we might not understand what it is that he might be doing. And so as we follow along after the Lord Jesus in the text, we see this woman, a Canaanite woman, following after the Lord Jesus and calling out to her, to him rather, for help. Lord, son of David, have mercy on me. My daughter suffers terribly from demon possession. And I don't know about you, but at the first sign of trouble, I have a way of fretting, wringing my hands, casting around for anything to figure out how I am going to handle this distress. Or maybe do we, do we put the last resort first and do we pray? It might look to us as we follow along with the Lord Jesus and see what he does. It might look to us like the Canaanite woman is embarrassing herself and it just isn't dignified to follow after the Lord Jesus and cry out like this. And actually, she is bearing the cross admirably and she does it right, better than I do sometimes. You see, we, we remember hard times. We know that they can happen. And the Lord Jesus even told us, you will have trouble in this world. And still, we, we hardly prepare ourselves. And in trouble, we can't remember the verses of the Bible. And prayer seems like a foreign language to us. And all of a sudden, it's like God isn't good anymore. And all of a sudden, we become experts at complaining. With a short temper self-pity and what the Lord Jesus gives, what he speaks into your ears and into your mind and into your heart is so much better. Forget not all his benefits, but seek the Lord while he may be found and call on him while he is near. And here he is. I can see him. I can hear his voice. He is here. He is to be found, to be near to us. And yet there's still more that this woman that we meet in the gospel lesson has to go through. Jesus did not answer her a word. And as Jesus does not answer her a word, and as she continues to call out to him, the disciples are getting increasingly uncomfortable with all of that. Send her away, Lord, for she keeps crying out after us. And so this is another test 
of faith. When God is silent, when he seems to postpone his help, why is he doing this? Is he cruel, the Lord Jesus? And has he singled me out? And why do I have to wait for his help? Notice who I am and the trouble itself has everyone looking down on me. You ever feel that way? God's silence might tempt us to to give up, to quit praying and to despair of God's good will for us. And sometimes sometimes we see this in our, our lives at home and with our families. Dad, can't we do this or that? Well, never mind. It's just going to be no anyway. But Jesus says to dads in Matthew chapter 7, if you, though you are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Father in heaven give good gifts to those who ask him? And he calls you. And he says, ask and seek and knock and don't give up. That is a a promise of good gifts to those who ask. And if God seems silent, don't forget when and where and how he speaks to you in the holy word and in the ministry of his gifts where you find him with all of his love and all of his mercy and all of his grace and all of his promises. He's spoken to us. He's spoken us his children and has spoken us a new life with him marked by prayer. And so Jesus says in Matthew 7, ask and it will be given to you. Seek and you'll find. Knock and the door will be opened. And maybe he's not just being poetic. Maybe he says it three times like this on purpose. Maybe he says it because the answer is delayed sometimes. And maybe because sometimes that's the best thing. That God calls on us to pray in his name. And he promises that he'll hear us. And God help us to pray this way from out of his command and trusting in his promise to pray out of his word, to trust in him only, relying on his mercy. After all, if you look at the text, what does the woman that we meet in that text have going for her? What does she have to bargain with? What does she have to purchase with from him, from the Lord Jesus? She has nothing. But Jesus and his goodness and prayer in his name. My soul waits for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. That's Psalm 130, and those words we take as the theme for our sermon today. And hold on, because it's gonna get worse before it gets better, but it gets better. Wait and see. The worst part comes in verse 24 where Jesus says to the woman, I was sent only to the lost sheep of Israel. And it's too much. It's too much if God's own word were to come against us. But the truth of the matter is, it does. God's word speaks about my sins, my slowness to believe, and how lukewarm and unwilling my heart is. But don't give up now because you have him talking, the Lord Jesus. And amazingly, the woman doesn't give up, poor and weak and helpless as as she is. And we've seen this before. We've seen it when Jacob prayed earnestly in fear for his life and for his family and for his children. And a man appeared to wrestle with him. And it was God himself who allows for hardship to come into your life and who sometimes keeps quiet. And won't let us find him except in his words. There, there Jacob wrestled with God. And he said, I will not let you go, Jacob said, unless you bless me. And this woman is a foreigner and a stranger, but faith in Jesus. 
Confidence in him makes Israel, those who wrestle with God, I know who you are. I know why you're here. And I know, in spite of how everything might look, that you, O Lord, are good. And so the woman came with all of the stuff that's on her mind and on her heart. She comes and she knelt before the Lord Jesus and said, Lord, help me. And that's when he replied, it is not right to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs. And we hear a text like that and we think, is, really? Is this Jesus as I've come to know him? And is he insulting her? And will she be insulted? And will she lash out at him? Is that any way to treat someone? How can Jesus talk like this? But you know, in my house, there is someone who always comes to the table, whether it's early in the morning or late at night, there is someone, whatever is served, it's like the best food he ever tasted. And he doesn't complain. And when it's served up, he doesn't say, not this again. Even at the sound of a popcorn bag or chips being opened, he comes running. And always he watches, never too proud to beg and never far away when the magic words, meaty treat, are spoken. We bring opinions and specific tastes and we bring pride and we complain and we go off in search of what we're looking for someplace else. We could learn something. We could learn a lot from the family dog. He knows where the food is. He can smell it. And he comes after it and he never gets distracted from it no matter how hard I try. Behold, as the eyes of servants look to the hand of their master, as the eyes of a maidservant to the hand of her mistress, so our eyes look to the Lord our God. And how long? Till he has mercy upon us. My soul waits for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. So look at the Lord Jesus and what he says and what he does. If you are are sent only to the lost sheep of Israel, yes, Lord, but then why are you here? Well, for those who are far from you shall perish, it says in the scriptures, but you are here. And it's not right for children uh, to take the children's bread and toss it to their dogs, but don't the dogs eat the crumbs. The woman is so confident and she's so reverent and she's so persistent. She's like the church praying the way that she does. Oh God, the son, redeemer of the world, have mercy on us. Oh Christ, lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world. Have mercy on us. And that that makes us the children, the ones who need deliverance from the devil, deliverance from his kingdom in the forgiveness of all of our sins as our mother, the church, pleads for us and we learn those words to plead with her. That is why the Lord Jesus suffered bearing our sins and that's why he died on the cross for you and for me and that's why he's here in the sermon and in the absolution and in the Holy Supper for you to meet him and to find him given for you. And the church pursues a Lord so good that she gets from him what she's looking for. Freedom from sin and Satan for all of her children on the merits of Jesus, on him only, and what he's done by his cross. She shares the victory over sin and death and hell with each one of us. And we learn in the arms of the church to trust in Christ always and no matter what. We are blessed, blessed to have the church for our mother. We troubled children whom Christ helps. And here the songs and the prayers and the petitions are all for us. And what are the crumbs? 
the promises and the pledges and the real presence of the Lord Jesus. So our eyes look to the Lord our God until he has mercy on us. My soul waits for the Lord, and in his word I put my hope. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be forevermore. Amen. Please rise. We'll join in singing the offertory verse. Lord God, Heavenly Father, grant us, we beseech you by your Holy Spirit that he may strengthen our hearts and confirm our faith and our hope in your grace and mercy so that although we have reason to fear because of, your, because of our conscience, our sin and unworthiness, may we nevertheless with the woman of Canaan hold fast to your grace and in every trial and temptation find you a present help and refuge through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. In his name, we come before you with a prayer on behalf of Norm Hardigan, who is suffering with kidney stones. Pray that you'd be with him and that you'd grant him relief and the comfort of the assurance of your promises. We pray with Bill and Ann Walken this morning um, and uh, ask for your blessing and that you would, with your word, be at work on the heart of their son, Anthony, to make room in his heart for your word and to bring him close to his father and mother. We ask Heavenly Father for each of the souls gathered here in your name today that you'd be with and bless and help us. Strengthen and sustain us on your words and promises and keep us even for eternal life with you in heaven. Hear us, most merciful Father in heaven, as we bring you our private petitions. O God, be merciful to all in the name of Christ our Savior and be with, build, and bless your holy Christian church here and in every place. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts, we lift them up unto the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is good and right so to do. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, almighty Father, everlasting God, through Jesus Christ, our Lord, therefore with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord God of heaven and heaven and earth are full of glory. Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna in 
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take it, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, gave thanks, and gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you and for many for the remission of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Please be seated.
depart now in peace. Our crucified and risen Lord Jesus Christ, who has now bestowed upon you his holy body and precious blood, whereby he has made full satisfaction for all your sins, strengthen and preserve you in true faith unto life everlasting. Be filled with joy. Your sins are forgiven. Peace be with you. Amen. Please rise.
We'll give thanks unto the Lord, for he is God, and his mercy endures forever. O God, the Father, fountain source of all goodness, who in loving kindness sent your only begotten Son into the flesh. We thank you that for his sake you've given us pardon and peace in the sacrament. And we beseech you not to forsake your children, but always to rule in our hearts and minds by your Holy Spirit, that we may be enabled constantly to serve you through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Ghost, ever one God, world without end. The Lord be with you. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless thee and keep thee. The Lord make his face shine upon thee and be gracious unto thee. The Lord lift up his countenance upon thee and give thee peace. Amen. 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 Please be seated. Hymn 523.
Once again, everyone, good morning. Thank you so much, everybody, for coming, for the chance to be together here in God's house. And I wish you all the Lord's peace and blessings from the things that you've heard and, and received from the Lord Jesus today.